Hello everyone, artist Charles Wolf here, back again for another painting video. Today we're going to do a nice seascape painting based on a photograph that I took out in Cape Hatteras. I'm going to be using a standard mixture of cobalt blue, titanium white, and a little bit of water so that it runs better. My standard sky mixture there. I'm going to begin by putting in the sky with this bright brush with a few delicate strokes up here in the left hand corner of my small 8x10 canvas board. The trick to this is to keep your brushwork light and active. Don't worry about perfectly covering up all of the white of the canvas. If a little bit of it shows through, it'll look better. I'm going to add a little bit more of the titanium white as I move along here, gradually lightening up the blue until it's a very milky white blue over here on the right. So it's a deeper, darker blue on the top left corner, and it's going to become lighter and more white filled as we go to the right. We're going to form a nice soft gradation from the light blue, the sky blue there, to a white into a very light creamy yellow using some of that Naples yellow and the titanium white. And then I'm going to go into a nice light pink at the end you're grabbing some of that Namthal Crimson in a few moments. So it's going to be blue into yellow into a soft pinkish orange. I remember as I stood there on the beach when I took the photograph, it was a very cold morning, almost freezing, and the wind just was whipping through the sand dunes as I stood on the beach on some rocks, and I was looking out over the Atlantic Ocean, and the sun was just rising. It burst over the horizon, and it was a glorious colors of pink and yellow, it was just lovely and so as soon as I took that photo I knew I wanted to do the painting and now a year later here I am painting it sometimes you don't get to things as fast as you think you will but in the end it's always useful if you are a beginning artist I always recommend that you look at photographs especially ones that you take yourself it's very convenient if you take your own photographs because you don't have to worry about copyright laws and you can definitely copy and use that directly if you're gonna find photographs online, make sure that they're royalty free. I find that if you just look something up on Google, it probably is copyrighted, so you probably don't want to copy or use that as the basis of your paintings. Gonna blend this carefully here, still using my bright brush. Here is the Naples yellow and the white. I'm gonna mix some more of that up. A little bit more intense with the yellow here. Just dabbing onto the canvas. And I'm gonna go back and blend that all together so it's a little bit smoother of a gradation. I'm going to leave about the bottom third of this canvas as the sea, as the ocean, so the sky will take up the top two-thirds of this canvas. I'm leaving some room for the pink here on the right bottom corner between the ocean and the upper sky. Touch more of the yellow here. I may blend the pink into the spot right here. With my mostly dry brush, I'm going to blend up the top here, the blue into the yellow a little bit better. Do note that blue and yellow do make green, so be careful. If you overblend, you will get a greenish color, and we don't want that. Add more white to it to prevent that. Clean my brush off. And now I'm into the titanium white, Namthal Crimson, plus a touch, the tiniest touch of the Naples Yellow to give it an orangish hue. Mostly white and the crimson. As you're painting in this horizon line, try to make it as straight as you possibly can. It doesn't need to be perfect, however, as always, we can always make adjustments as we go. I know that the ocean can be adjusted as well if you need to make some corrections but we're trying to make it straight 
to give herself a good guy line as we go. One thing that you can try is grab a ruler and you can use that to make sure that you're painting it perfectly. I'm a little lazy to do that, so I'll just eyeball it. Filling in the space here with this pink. Allowing some of the white canvas to show through. Creates sort of a cloudy effect. I've been enjoying painting my abstracts, and those who follow my channel regularly, you'll know that I like to do a mixture of landscapes and abstracts. I find that the landscapes are slightly more popular than the abstracts that I do, but I'll still do the abstracts because I love doing them so very much. Although, to be fair, my most popular video is a simple abstracted landscape called Blue Ocean. You'll find that in my abstracts playlist. That piece is a very abstract seascape that has simply blues and some gray in it. Very easy piece to do. I think it's why it's so popular. People like to imitate it. I'm hoping that this piece will be equally interesting to most people. Not necessarily needing to be popular, just hopefully it'll be intriguing. Grabbing some more of the cobalt blue, naphthol crimson, naples yellow, and some titanium white to make a light brown mixture. Keep adding blue and red and white until you get it looking about where it needs to be. Actually, all you need to add together is the three primaries, red, yellow, blue, and you get brown. But the white makes it lighter. A little bit of the black can create more of a grayish undertone to it. In fact, here I don't think I added any of the Mars black to that. Now the reason why I'm adding the brown here at the bottom right hand corner is that the shore is going to show through underneath some of these waves. And I want the sand to be showing so this light brown will stand in for the sand. Of course the blue and the white that I'm going to layer over this will cover up a good deal of it, but that tone should still be underneath. And if I do it just right it'll look like wet sand is what I'm hoping for. If I add a touch of the Mars Black to my mixture, I can get more of a grayed out tone. And these are going to be my rocks. I'm going to make them a bit darker by adding a little bit more of the black, and maybe a touch of the blue dancing throughout. So I have jumped down from doing the sky to doing the foreground, just the basic shapes. And that will help give me a better guideline for where my water needs to be, and my perspective and proportions for the waves. I find that if I try to go right from the sky to the waves, it can get a little funky. So putting in this foreground helps me to keep everything in perspective better. Okay, there are my rocks. The blue acts as a shadow color, a quick shadow color. And I can layer in some highlights at the very end. Grabbing some cobalt blue, some Mars black, and some titanium white. Gonna make more of a gray color sort of a light blue and this will be the shadow color for the waves and I'll start right back here using my bright brush just the tip of the bright brush and gently lay in these shadows keep it very light we're just barely grazing the canvas board. Of course we're not going to leave this much white. I'm just putting in the shadows and we'll go back in with some light blue and put that in as well. The light is very interesting when the sun just gets above. You can either mirror it below and have an opposite gradation of yellows and the pinks and the blue in the water. but that tends to look more like a sunset, to be honest. And so, when you actually are standing there on the beach looking at the sunrise, you'll notice that at this time, right as the sun, and you can see the white, the white circle that stands in for the sun, rises, the water turns this gorgeous kind of grayish silver blue. And it doesn't stay that way for very long. 
but it, it is there. And so I'm kind of capturing or trying to capture that silvery gray tone of the water right as the sun is just above the horizon. You wouldn't think of that necessarily, but it does turn this color at least at this time of the year uh, in the spring and in this particular part of Cape Hatteras, which is on the outer banks of North Carolina. Adding my white to my blue-gray mixture, that's going to be my light blue, which will be the standard color for the water. So we're going to fill in most of the white areas that you see on this bottom half of the canvas, bottom third. I'm going to play in some of the white while I go along here. Light blue. I'm going to have it be lighter further out because the sun is over there, the light source. And so as things get farther away from me, they're going to get lighter in color. As they get closer to me, they're going to be a bit more shadowed. Now those white waves way out there, we're going to change that. Don't feel like you have to copy all of it. And in fact, with water, it's difficult to copy stroke for stroke what I'm doing. I'm putting this in rather intuitively. I have a photograph nearby that I'm looking at, but the actual wave shapes, I'm doing it more by feel than copying every little swell that you can see in the actual photograph trying to get the basic large-scale gestures first and overall. We can go back at a later time and put in some more details with our liner brush at the end. Right now, just get the colors right. Interplay of the darker blue-gray mixture, which is the shadows underneath the swells, and the light blue is the swaths of water in between the actual wave caps. Okay, taking my flat wash brush, kind of a wider brush with some white, I'm going to gently, with almost a dry brush technique, put some white over top of this sandy brown color that I put earlier. We don't want to cover it all up, so I'm being not too generous with the white. I just want it to be slightly lighter. So I'm going to layer a thin layer of white over top of the brown. To get out here into the waves, I can be a bit more generous with the white and it'll look like the tops of the waves, the caps. Looking at this now, I'm thinking I'm going to go back, or have to go back, with the darker color and the contrast to better preserve the look of the different swells. I just fixed the horizon line a little bit with the blue. Brought it up a little bit higher, try to make it straighter. Let's take some of the white here, go back into my gray mix, grab some more of the cobalt blue and create some more of this darker mixture. And we're going to put back in some of the shadows here. When you go to the store, you'll be confronted with a large selection of colors. And what I'm trying to show to you is that you don't need to buy every color that's there. In fact, all you really need are the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, and of course, white and black. If you have those three colors, you can get a wide variety of other colors by mixing them together. And so if you've watched my painting videos, I'm hoping that you will realize that you don't need to buy a bunch of colors, especially if you're a beginning artist. You can mix them yourself and get much closer effects and be a lot more interesting and realistic with your colors than if you try to buy each and every shade, because there's just too many. Even if you buy a bunch of different colors, you have to know how to mix them and where to mix them. Sometimes they don't mix very well. So to avoid all of that, I like to keep things simple and more uniform by just using the three primaries, Mars, Black, Titanium White, and occasionally I'll bring in like an earthy umber or a brown. For my Abstracts, I'll be a little bit more adventurous with my color choices. I'll bring in magenta and orange right from the tube. But I'm doing that because I'm looking for a specific effect. I want a very pure, bright color. But for these landscapes, because everything to me in landscapes are typically more muted or more saturated, I'm going to be mixing my colors together. And I find that I enjoy the process a whole lot more if I've mixed all of my colors. 
You'll notice that in my videos I often use a cardboard palette, and that's just to save cost. It's also easy to see against the brown, the different colors, and how I'm mixing them. And that's a great cheap way, instead of buying fancy palettes, you don't need to do that. You can simply um, get some cardboard from your Amazon box that you may get in the mail and cut a part of that off and use it like I am. Okay, putting in some more of these darker gray shadows. I've added some black to my mixture to darken it up. Have a nice big swell here at the front. Right now it doesn't look like much, mostly just a triangle shape, but when I go here with my liner brush and put the top of the wave on top of that darker contrasting section, you'll really see how the whole thing comes together. Of course there's some smaller ripples down here at the bottom that I need to put in with my liner brush. A good friend of mine and fellow artist Dave Usher, he has a YouTube channel that you should definitely check out. He asked me in one of my most recent videos what kind of easel I was using and to talk about it, and so I'm going to do that right now. This is an aluminum field easel, which means that it's used for plein air painting. So if you're going outside, you want to have a sturdy easel that's not going to blow away. But this actual easel uh, has spikes that are in the feet that I can extend and drive into the dirt so it won't move. I've actually used it for that purpose. Since I've started painting a lot more in my studio, my home studio, I have not needed the spikes, of course, in my carpet. That wouldn't be good. The smallest paintings I do are these 8x10s, and I go up to 24x24 24 24 inch canvases. And I've found that this easel holds up pretty well. I think I bought this easel at Hobby Lobby, I think is the store I got it at. And it's one of their standard, like, $80 easels that you can get. And the biggest thing I like about it is that it is collapsible. It's an aluminum easel, so it's going to be sturdy, and it's collapsible, so I can store it in a very small space. That is very useful to me to have something that I can store it easily and um, can be light enough so that when I carry it out onto locations, occasionally when I do that, I find that I want something that is sturdy but light. So this is a great compromise for that. So it's just a basic field easel that I'm using. I a touch of the Naples yellow here in the front, and that'll help add some lighter flecks of the sunlight hitting across the top of the water there. Pick up the white again with my flat wash brush and bring that back in, kind of blending this together a little bit better. Grabbing some more white with my flat wash brush. I actually did a chalk study for this particular painting using chalk pastels. And I actually put that up on my blog. It's impulsiveartistry.blogspot.com. Again, that's impulsiveartistry.blogspot.com. You should head over there and check it out. I posted that study for this painting that I did in the chalk pastel, I think a couple weeks ago. So if you go back into the blog archive for my latest blog post, you can definitely find it. I think I labeled it pastel seascape or something like that. And you can see the, the study for this painting that I did from the same photograph. And then I went ahead and I painted the uh, actual piece with acrylics. <laughs> Interestingly enough, the pastels comes off a little bit lighter, of course, it's more muted, more saturated with the white, and it was interesting to use the pastels and to paint with them. Versus this particular painting and this piece, here's some of the light blue mix by the way, with my flat wash brush, a bit more of the white now. This painting was a lot more vibrant and the colors, especially the pink, came out a lot stronger. I found that the chalk captured the subtleties a bit better, and maybe that's just my skill, but I found that the blue is a little bit too intense, I think, in this painting. So if I did it again, this exact piece, I might add a bit more of the black and a little bit less of the cobalt blue in my C mixture. I mean, it is blue, but I think if it was a touch more in the gray family, it would be even more striking. So that's my one criticism of my own painting here would be, I think, if you added a little bit more of the black and a little less of the cobalt, it would look that much better. 
And so you can see that in my original chalk pastel. Again, check out my blog if you want to see that actual study for this piece. Oops, made a bit of a mistake there. I'm going to go back and fix that. Grab my finger, smudge it out, try it again. You can see I'm being a lot more liberal with the white here. because I'm painting in these waves using the corner of my flat wash brush. I find that painting is a bit of a juggling act. You're often trying to find the right balance, like I say in a lot of my videos, between the light and the dark. And so for me especially, it takes sometimes a little while to get it just right. But when you get it, you know it. Very lightly bringing in some white in the sky, I want to give the suggestion of a few wispy clouds. Okay, need some more of the blue-gray to pull this piece down. Getting a little oversaturated with white and you can't see the individual waves enough. Some very light strokes here, just gently tapping. Taking the white and the Naples yellow with my liner brush. I'm going to start putting in a few highlights on these rocks where they're facing the sun, right on the edge here, cutting across there. That light yellow reflects some of the sky and it has a pop of interest on the left hand side. Grabbing some more of my light brown mix, I'm going to blend this in a little bit followed by my gray mixture and darken up that section there on the left hand corner where the rock is very shadowed from the sun. Back to the lighter yellow, I'm going to reapply a little bit more of the highlight and we will call this painting about done. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate all of your support. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. I appreciate you all following my work. If you have any suggestions on future painting videos, leave them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you, what your thoughts on this painting. And I hope that you all have a fantastic artistic week. A few last strokes here with my liner brush with the white. I think in like one minute we'll have this piece finally finished. One last time into the white and the gray mixture.